Hey there, guys. Um, this is Dr. Lisa, Heart of Inspiration, and we're here to talk about the Wendy Williams part two, which is really the second night, which is really part three and four of the documentary that aired this weekend. Now, I want to apologize. We were not able to have the open panel as we were scheduled to. We'll be having that shortly, but I wanted to for sure come to you and bring you um, my take on it and uh, highlight some very important information. And then also, I just was able to see an interview that the best friend did on uh, News Nation with Chris, Chris Cuomo, say that five times fast. And I want to talk about that too, because it highlights, I think, some very, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling her. I'm not feeling her. I find this very interesting. So um, thank you for being here. Uh, don't forget to do all the YouTube things. We're going to play a quick intro and then we're going to get into Wendy Williams. Is this a cry for help? Was this, as I said, <laughs> from the beginning, you guys can go back and watch the other video. I knew that this was going to be Whitney's Britney moment, her Britney moment. So uh, here we go, and I'll be right back. Hey, welcome back. Hey, welcome back. Here at this channel, the Heart of Inspiration, we talk about a various amount of different things, right? We talk a little bit about, a lot of bit about spirituality, um, astrology, tarot, and other um, aspects of spirituality, deconstructing some of the religious, religious uh, dogmas that we've had in our lives. But also, I like to bring current events, uh, cultural events, pop culture, things that are going on and bring it to you from an energetic perspective. So you can kind of go behind the curtain and see what else is back there so that you can find the inspiration in your life to break free from the matrix and to live a life that is thriving and not just surviving. So let's talk about the Wendy Williams documentary. Listen, part two, part one, we saw how Wendy, this was supposed to be their come, her comeback, right? They thought they were going in there to film Wendy's comeback, um, the podcast or whatever it was going to be. And what they ended up discovering was a very broken Wendy, a broken system of guardianship. And as we began to peel back the layers, we began to see that Wendy was not okay back in 2022, for sure. She was not okay. She was not being taken care of. The guardian did not make sure that there were, um, if there was anything in there that was going, that there was no food in the house. There was no caretaker. Um, the people around her, I, 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 now a couple of days removed, I do feel that Will probably Will Selby. He, I I think he just didn't want to believe that she was as bad as she was. Um, I I I think that he just was trying to make the best of a situation. I don't think that he thought. I don't know. I don't know what he thought. I think it was. You know, how sometimes you can see something directly in front of your face, and you're just being a little bit delusional about it. And I feel like that's what was going on. Um, Sean. Um, the, uh, the publicist, uh, clueless, I, I mean, clueless. And I'm beginning to question when that she's still her publicist and you'll see that from this quick Chris Cuomo. So I'm going to go over this too, but, uh, cause this was very interesting to me in part two though, we see she's not in a good, great place, right? We see that. Uh, you know, she's gone to, to LA, she's dr 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 drinking, she comes back, she's just spiraling and deteriorating because with the alcohol-induced dementia, it did not appear that this guardian cared a rat's patooey 
I should probably put my um, allegedly banner up here because everything stated by me, here we go, is my opinion by any guest that I have is their opinion and any criminal or scandalous acts are alleged. Now, it doesn't appear by what we're seeing here and by the questions that 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 production was asking repeatedly uh, the, the the guardianship didn't seem to care that was not the purpose of bringing her there right bringing her back to to new york i've heard rumblings and when i get a little bit more of a chance we can dig a little deeper because kevin senior put up a post that he took down and now i got to go find it um but that it appears that what they what De Dembar Mercury really wanted to do was be able to exercise the uh, insurance policy they had on her just in case she was unable to make to any longer you know do the show and so that they wouldn't lose any money in the in in the midst because you know you get kind of paid you get paid by the networks it's a syndicated show and they had insurance on her um, in the normal world or in our world, it's called key man insurance. I'm sure it's called something else in the industry. I don't know if anybody knows. Please leave me a comment on what you the insurance you have on talent. But basically, it's an insurance policy that should she find herself unable to continue, that then the insurance policy is enacted. It's it's you get to place your claim and then everybody on the production team and the production company that would normally make a certain percentage, all of those people then get paid. Now I'm pretty sure you, the talent should probably get paid as well. Kind of like disability insurance, you know? Um, but I'm wondering where's that money? So, you know, hashtag, where's the money? Hashtag free Wendy Williams. So where's that money? Cause if there was an insurance policy, that's a whole separate issue, and maybe we can get into that. But what became apparent by uh, um, April of 2023, from what I understand, the production came into the apartment, saw that she was unresponsive, contacted Will. Will contacted the guardian, and that's when Will was like, we have to get her help. I'm sure he knew beforehand. And it was quite painfully obvious when he took her to Florida and shout out to Will for taking her to Florida. Okay. I know he had his problems. I'm not, I'm not caping for Will. I'm not the, 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 the Will, you know, cheerleader, Will Selby. However, I will say this. He took her to Florida to see her family. The Guardian never would have let Wendy go to Florida had not Will taken her to Florida to see her family. Can we just be real? Because they snatched her from there. They said, you got to come back here to New York and face this BS kangaroo court guardianship. Even though you're thriving down there and you're getting better and you're on the road to, to your health being restored to whatever degree was possible, you were off the sauce, as they say, you're eating well, you're getting the proper vitamins, you're getting the proper medical care. You know, let's not pretend that Kevin Jr. and the family wasn't making sure she was getting medical care. In fact, we now find out that Kevin Jr. was the financial uh, power of attorney, but it appears to me that the power of attorney or the medical um, person was Wanda. That's what I'm that's what I was. I'm piecing it all together. That Wanda, her sister, who is an attorney in her own right. So for the state of New York to say that Wanda, who is a licensed attorney, to sit here and say that she could not care for her own sister is beyond me. For her, them to dangle, we found out by the end of it that they dangled this well, we're going to put her under guardianship. She's she's not well. Do you agree? Yep. Wanda naively agreed. Well, what do I need to do to be her legal guardian? Well, you need to take this course. And then they never followed up. And all they did then at that point, when they found out who they were really dealing with, because my gut tells me these people didn't know who they was really dealing with. They didn't know the power of this family. They didn't know the structure of this family. They did not know the intelligence of this family. They did not know that this family was capable of rallying around her and caring for her. 
And if the family was rallying around her and caring for her, if the family had financial and physical guardianship over Wendy, then all those people in New York, including, including Lori Schiller, including Wells Fargo, including Dunbar Mercury, including all of them, would have had to fall in line with what the family's wishes were because they would, Wanda or whomever, would have been named the legal guardian of Wendy Williams. You don't want that if you're trying to, you don't want that if if your goal is not to see Wendy well, but to, but to milk this situation for all that it's worth, to expose her, to uh, use her, to write. It's a hot take when I said, oh, we got a runaway slave here, but that's what it feels like. That's the energy of this. We own you. How dare you question how we're managing your money. Again, if you watched the entirety of this and you paid attention to what was said repeatedly, it was repeatedly stated that there was never an issue of financial possible uh, impropriety until the family said, she ain't well enough to come sit in that pink chair. We're not going. We're not doing this. She's doing better here. We're getting her well. When she's well enough to come back and sit in the chair, that's when she'll come back. They were putting Wendy's health as a priority. And that's not something, even Kevin Sr., for all the other protections, I'm not entirely certain at this point that he put Wendy's health at a priority either. Now, he may have protected her from the wolves. And I'm not going to deny that. I'm not going to take that from him you know, cause she was still getting propped up and she was still right. She wasn't, it was just, it was not good on the whole, but I think he was trying to help her keep it together long enough to at least finish out that contract. And had he not gone off and had that baby and been flaunting his, his side piece everywhere, they would have still been together. And I think she would have finished out the contract. I think she would have gone out in grace and in style in the in something in, in in a situation that is befitting of Wendy Williams, the icon, the woman that started everything that a lot of us are doing here on YouTube and everywhere else, the blogging, the T. There would be no TMZ. There would be no. You know what I'm saying? There would be none of that stuff. There would be no Breakfast Club type stuff. There'd be none of this. There'd be none of that. There'd be no tea spilling. Not without Wendy. You got to follow the money. And and guys, and I'm not saying anything negative to anybody else, but I'm asking those of you that are in all and up in arms about the fact that we shouldn't see Wendy like this. This is exploitative. This is this, this. I'm going to ask you for just one second. Watch the darn thing and watch it with your eyes wide open and your mind open to the possibility that what was supposed to be perhaps a little exploitative, she signed all this before she was really bad off. As, uh, that's my understanding. I got to go back and research that. I want you to open your mind up to the possibility. What we saw in the second part, once they stopped filming her in April, and then Will said demanded that Will Will demanded that the Guardian put her in a facility. Will put her in a facility until yeah, or she's still there as far as we know. But when that happened, okay, when Will put her in that facility, hello. Then she began to get help. Production, Will stayed in contact with production. Production then also starts talking to the family more directly. Okay, so now she's been in this facility and we we have no reason to believe she hasn't been in this facility this whole entire time. But what's happening in this facility is this. She's sober. At first, you know, when we see the family speaking, especially Wanda. Wanda said at the very end, her sister was like, I didn't want to be a part of none of this. But once production, I'm going to, this is my, my belief. This is my belief that once production kind of talked to her and said, listen, maybe will, maybe it was production. Maybe it was a combination, but I'm my guess it was production because this is their production, right? This is their, this is their film they're making. They're like, listen, this is what we've been seeing. This is what's been going on. Da, 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 And remember, we all now have the benefit of seeing what happened 
behind the curtain, behind the scenes with Britney Spears. And it wasn't until a very broken Britney finally spoke up and the, the audio got leaked. Somebody got into that Zoom call in LA and the audio got leaked. And when we heard her cry for help, that's the only time that finally we got that this woman was able to break free. This is Wendy's Britney moment. This is the time. This is Wendy's Britney moment. And do you know how I know that for sure? The phone call that happened at the end of the whole documentary, the phone call that happened at the end of the whole thing. When Wendy called, Alex Finney answered, hands the phone while Wanda's filming to her mama, Wanda. Wanda didn't put that call on speakerphone. Wanda put that phone right up to her ear tight. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you, you reach out to, okay. So you have your notepad, you have your book, write down this date, that, 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 this date, no response, called, no re- date and time, no response, date and time, no response, date and time, no response. And then when production was like, well, can you tell us about that call? She said, no. And then, so production's putting two and two together and says, well, isn't this supposed to be reviewed once a year? She said, yeah. And then she said, this Wendy that I'm talking to is much closer, right, to the old Wendy. She's not like in this kind of demented dementia state. She's able to be lucid and, you know, I'm putting words in her mouth, be responsible, accountable, like she's behaving normally. And it's been almost a year. So it probably took this long. You couldn't do this in a two week stint or a 30 day stint or a 60 day stint. She had to be in there for a lengthy amount of time. Now they don't know what facility she's at. She's not allowed to tell them. And even if she was, they wouldn't be allowed to be up in there because they, you know, they were on lockdown. But She said that it's her hope that Wendy will be able to speak in front of the court. Hashtag free Wendy Williams. We have to make sure when this happens in May, and I'm going to call upon the internet sleuths, and I'm going to start contacting people that I've watched and supported for a long time throughout this whole Britney thing to find out from them how how this kind of, how does this groundswell of support get started right for Wendy? This was a cry for help. Now we're going to go in deeper into it in another time, but I want to hit this before I uh, need to let you go. So under the section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976, allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, education, and research. So I'm about to show you this. This is from Newsmax. Um, and we're going to put my allegedly sign up again. This is from Newsmax. This is an interview that I just saw this morning. I'm going to guess it was from Monday, but I'll find out. This is, I think her name is Regina, and she's now coming out and slamming the documentary. And I want you to hear the reasoning why, and I'm going to let y'all comment down below. So I'm going to share this right here. And we're going to go this this size. Okay, here we go, gang. Wendy Williams and the new documentary that just came out about her life. I can't, can't really tell you. I can't really recommend it to you. It's certainly not the way Wendy would want to be depicted. So first of all, here's Chris, Chris Cuomo. Just like everybody else, I mean, not everybody else. I can't tell you I can, can recommend it. Chris Cuomo, why don't you want this recommended? Because you could clearly see she's not being taken care of. I'm sure. Uh, Everyone knew when she stepped down after a decade of doing her talk show, the Wendy Williams show, that something wasn't right. We weren't sure what it was. I saw it firsthand. Uh, Recently, we found out that Williams has been suffering from aphasia, which is something that goes along with what's called fronto, not frontal, fronto temporal dementia. Same thing as Bruce Willis. Same thing as so many of us deal with it. Let's move forward to, because I'm tired of him already. We're going to move forward to... Conditions that we're now aware of. Worse. And nobody knows that better than her closest friend, okay? Regina Schell. She was in the film, although she didn't know that it was going to come out this way. And she joins us now. Um, I'm sorry to meet you under these 
uh, circumstances. Uh, but I know it's really important for you to. Now, do you guys remember Regina? She's Wendy's childhood friend. Okay, Regina's Wendy's childhood friend. And now she's got a problem. But I want you to hear a lot of what she says. Here, listen up. Speak up for your friend. Let's talk about what matters most Absolutely. to you. I just got a piece of uh, information that the woman who is currently the appointed guardian has been accused of a scheme to rob a different client. There's a $30 million suit against her. You have said... Which, guys, this is the first time I'm hearing about this, which we will be investigating. I know that's not typically, right, energetic stuff, but I think it's important for you all to understand how one can get into these spaces. And this really, I mean, if somebody's robbing you blind or your, or your person, your, 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 your loved one blind, this is a problem. So we need to investigate this as we're going through the free Wendy Williams movement and creating it. Ed, you have concerns about what is going on with this guardianship. How so? Um, when I was in New York and staying with Wendy in the summer, I noticed when she would call, she had no access to her money. So every time she had to do anything that she had to pay for, she had to go through the guardian. And she would call to order her breakfast at 7.30 in the morning with the guardian and she would take the order and the order wouldn't show up until sometimes noon. And so Wendy wouldn't have any food. Did y'all catch that? First of all, I want y'all to catch two things. One, why does she get to stay with Wendy and the family can't stay with Wendy? You can find that out in a minute. Two, here she's contacting the guardian because she has to, because she ain't got no access to her money, right? For breakfast, because there's no food in the house, as we found out. And the breakfast don't even come till noon. And when I went back to L.A., I would have to send her food from Los Angeles to New York for through delivery service because she wasn't get the communication wasn't there and she had no other access to money than this guardian. And so that's what was concerning to me because she was telling me she didn't have food and her publicist also who lives out in LA, both of us were going back and forth sending food to Wendy because she wasn't having access to food. Now that's my guess that's Sean. Do we maybe think a little bit differently about Sean right now? I'm not sure yet, but let's just, I mean, she gets a, she gets a tick mark for that. Okay. She would send Wendy food. You know, I was reading and in so here, Regina, where you were like, certainly. where you were worried that one of the impacts of this documentary or whatever you want to call it um, is going to be that Wendy won't work again. But do you believe that she'll ever be I, I in control that... of her? Go ahead, please. I think that um, the depiction of this, what I thought was going to be a comeback kid story, seems to be like a demise of Wendy's story. And I haven't heard an official diagnosis from a doctor. You know, I've heard from this team that we don't know who the team is, and from Kevin and her, her uh, nephew, Travis, that no doctor has actually confirmed these diagnoses. So, I mean, Maybe I'm in denial because I'm so close to the issue and I have in reflection, I see the behaviors that could potentially be such a diagnosis, but I don't want to believe that she is in the, at this point unproducible. What? We saw this. Now I understand there's cuts, there's edits, there's this, there's that. All of us saw this, what had happened on this documentary. All of us saw how she was dressed in L.A. in boom, boom shorts and fishnet and <laughs> all of us saw this. And your statement is that you're considered, you're, you're, you're concerned that it will make her unproducible? <laughs> unproducible. 
when Chris Cuomo brought up the stealing of the money from the Guardian that she's been allegedly, and we'll find the filing. I'm going to find the filing. That she's allegedly, she's now been being sued for stealing $30 million, not $30, not $300, not $3,000, not $30,000, $30 million from another Guardian. So this is, the, can we, just, we, I can't wait to do the expose on the Guardian. Can we just say, can we just say that this Guardian potentially, potentially, Allegedly, she sounds like she's the one that comes in for the high end, the big bucks. $30 million? Are you insane? You don't even comment on that. Instead, you go to, well, she wasn't making sure she was getting food, which is important. You're not concerned about your friend's money? And how are you able, why the hell you didn't call the family, right? Why you didn't call the family and tell them in the summertime, this is what was going on. And what summer are we talking about? Because in April of 2023, she was in the facility. So what summer, the summer of 2022, which she was deteriorating quickly and you go out there and stay there, how are you getting reimbursed for the for what you're sending, Wendy? Is the Guardian sending you your reimbursement money? How could you want your friend to work when she clearly is incapable of doing so? So I am side-eyeing the friend big time. Here we go. That's not my opinion. I'll tell you, when I was with her, uh, a few summers ago, I guess now, um, she was impressively a mess. Uh, I felt very badly for her. I talked to her about it directly, and as you might imagine, uh, she had absolutely no appetite for the discussion. But she was putting down a lot of substances. And she then uh, wound Now, he says substances. I've heard people asking questions about is it, you know, she's still doing, you know, the snow bunny or whatever you want to call it. I hate to call it a white horse. Putting down all that substance. He didn't say specifically alcohol. Wound up yes. going on break to get herself together. Do you believe that Wendy had uh, figured out how to deal with her behaviors before this diagnosis? Yes, I think that she, ha Wendy has always, I've known Wendy since we were 13 years old. Wendy's always been doing what she wants, when she wants, how she wants, and she's very clever. So she could potentially have been getting away, quote unquote, with a diagnosis potentially like this for a long time because she's quite smart and yeah, she could. Uh, can I ask y'all a question? Does that make any sense at all? So somebody that's deteriorating with frontal, whatever, uh, dementia, with dementia, alcohol-induced dementia, aphasia, and any man of other things. So you think that Wendy's smart enough to be able to fake the funk? You think Wendy's... So I'm going to guess if you're this close to her, you as well have seen the deterioration. So what's the what 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 was Regina getting out of this? Who's what what is Regina going to get out of this? What's her take? Because clearly she's able to have more contact with Wendy than the family, and she wants Wendy to go back to work, which the it it appears everybody else except for people that actually care about her want her to go back to work like immediately make her unproducible. Oh, she's smart enough. She could, she could navigate dementia. Oh my God. Well, I know you're concerned. And, and, and one more thing. So let me get this straight. The guardianship 
which you didn't say anything about the fact that they're potentially allegedly stealing money, according to an affidavit, according to a court filing from someone else. Uh, you, all your thing was just communication. You, you're you concerned whether she can be producible again, uh, but you're not sure. Like, you haven't heard from a doctor. Who are you? The Kevin came out. Travis came out. The whole family came out. You can, Ray Charles could see that this woman's got a problem. And the and they came out, the, the, the guardianship came out and said, yep, this is what she's got. This is the diagnosis, but a, a doctor hasn't come out. And even Wendy herself, during her Instagram, back in 2021, her Instagram post, then said that, the, um, that uh, Lori Schiller used a doctor's diagnosis to put her into the guardianship. Lady, I, I, you, mm -mm. with friends like this. Concerned about her. I know that this is so screwed up because it's hard for you to even get access when you want and to see the person who's so close to you in your life. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to the Okay, so that's what we got going. That's the end of that. I'll put the link to this um, debacle down in the bottom in the description box below. I got questions now. I got even more questions. And the reason why I brought this up again uh, no offense, but if you've not watched the documentary and you're out here saying, well, Wendy wouldn't want this, Wendy wouldn't want this, then you have no clue about that conversation that happened at the very end of the documentary where she's much more lucid. She's been at that point, that was in October, 2023. She had been in the facility for six months since April of 2023. When Wanda said, Hey, I'm here, I'm filming just so you know, she, she, you could kind of hear, Oh, good. Or, or no, it was when the um, niece said, Hey, you know, my mom's right here. You want to talk to her? She's filming. The production crew is here. And then right. Also, um, you know, Wanda said, I'm here with the production crew. Wendy knew exactly what was about to come out in that. She knew precisely what was about to be said and what was about to come out. Don't think she didn't. She absolutely did because this is her cry for help. She was willing to be quote unquote embarrassed. How can you get embarrassed? Because this whole concept that she's somehow... Um, this is an embarrassment for her. The woman is being abused. The woman, can we just break that down to those brass tacks? The woman is being abused. No one, no one that suffers that should ever feel ashamed when it comes out that that's what's happening to them. And how dare we shame her, especially if you haven't even watched the darn thing us having opinions of things when we have not done our due diligence, when we've not watched these documentaries, when we've not dug a little deeper, when we've not looked into this, but having an opinion that this isn't the way Wendy would want to be seen just from a few 30 second clips and some commercials, but you didn't watch it. You, you, and, and, and you got to use your cognitive thinking and some of y'all might get mad at me and I honestly don't care. You can put in the comments. I don't care, but there's something awry. We should not be shaming her for wanting it told and wanting everyone to know how she's being treated, mistreated, abused, and used, and now potentially stolen from. From Listen, I got to get out of here, y'all. This is a much longer video than I intended. We're going to continue this process. We're going to continue looking into this. We are going to continue to ask when, not only where is Wendy Williams, but we're going to continue to hashtag free work to free Wendy Williams, and I, for one, am ready, willing, and able to start that movement. Until next time, peace, love, blessings, and joy be unto you today, tomorrow, and for all eternity. I love you guys so very much. Namaste. Bye, gang.